Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, and portfolios. This week, I thought I would mix it up and I would actually review my own personal resume that I have on my website. So one of my subscribers, Pranath, reached out over LinkedIn and he had noted that I actually had some spelling errors, pretty egregious spelling errors on my own personal resume. To me, that's not acceptable and I have to be accountable for that. So I wanted to make this video to let you guys know that, you know, one, I'm human, and two, if you do make a mistake, if you have something out there that you're not proud of, you should go back and you should fix it, you should make these changes. So I wanted to, one, thank Pranath. I also wanted to go in and talk about, while I'm here, some of the things that I do on my resume that you probably shouldn't do on your resume. I don't think you should use mine as an example. You know, I haven't been looking for jobs for the past two years. My resume is mostly decorative, it's informative. It is not designed for actually getting jobs, at least right now. So I'll talk about, you know, a couple of things I do well that could help you, and then a couple of the things that you definitely should not do related to my resume, uh, because they are not relevant to where you are in the actual job process. So with that being said, if you're interested in actually having your own resume reviewed by me, Feel free to reach out in the comments, let me know below, and also shoot me an email at kenji.ds at gmail.com. That'll be in, pinned in the first comment, the actual email address. So without further ado, let's actually jump into this and, and talk about first, again, some of the things that I do fairly well. So the first thing that, that I think I do well on this resume and that is relevant for you is that I have all of my links up top. I think it's really important that you share with employers all of the outside work that you're doing and you recognize that your resume is so much bigger than just a piece of paper. It's all of your online work, it's all of your portfolio. You definitely wanna share all of that. I have a link to my GitHub, I have a link to my YouTube, my Medium, all the places that I produce content. One thing that I don't have on here yet is my Kaggle profile. So that's an initiative I'm really working on later this month or early next month is to start doing some projects there and sharing them via YouTube. I think that that'll be a lot of fun uh, and that'll help me also build out some content there. So I really am trying to practice what I preach. It's one of the other reasons why I'm making these corrections and, and trying to help you guys out through that right now. So the next thing I do is I have all of my technical skills up here, up top. You know, if there's a job posting and they're asking for someone with experience at Python and clustering algorithms, if I don't have those things on my resume, they'll write me off almost immediately. I have those things right up top and that's a reason to kind of, for them to realize that, hey, this person has what we're looking for and we can move them on to the next round. Next, we're gonna look at a little bit of my, uh, you know, my focus on work experience here. So I'm a little further along in my career now. I have pretty good experience with data science in general. Now. I don't have any projects on here as you'll notice. And as you do more work, you generally include less projects because projects are a way to actually, you know, supplement your work experience if you don't have as much there. You know, I would rather see an internship than a project uh, if, you ha if you're limited on space. But projects are incredibly powerful, especially if you don't have that much uh, advanced experience. So, you know, one thing I could still do is I do have some cool projects and I, I think I probably should put a couple on here. Uh, I am just running out of space and I'm trying to figure out how to navigate that. I've obviously done a, a reasonable amount in my career and I still have everything on one page and that's something I'm fairly proud of. I think it means that I'm able to hopefully um, in a visual appealing way, display all of my career and all of the things, all the work that, that I'm very proud of at this point. I also have what I believe to be a pretty good about me section. I think that this is fairly unique. You know, I, I talk about my favorite books that I've read this year. I talk about my experience as a professional golfer. I talk about how I enjoy mentoring people through my YouTube videos. And that's something that if I was reviewing this resume it would stick out to me. You know, I'd say, oh, the professional golfer when I'm referring to this candidate, because we all think in, in heuristics. So if you have something that really sticks out in your resume, I think someone a couple weeks ago w was a professional violinist. You know, that, that's something that's very interesting and, and unique about that person. I'm not saying that it's going to get you to the next round, but it will be something that is fairly memorable about you. So by all means, you know, share those things. You don't make it take up your whole resume, but people like to see unique experiences that promotes diversity of thought in the workplace. 
Now, I think it's time to talk about some of the things that I do not do well on this. So, for you guys, absolutely do not include a picture on your resume. That is a no-no. That is not something uh, that employers really like seeing. That's arguably something that'll write you off immediately because a lot of the resume screening systems do not take kindly to that. I include that on here because, you know, I see that on like Elon Musk's fake resume and, and Marissa Meyer's fake resume, they, they all have their pictures. Uh, and that's just mostly for a, a decorative type thing. This is, again, not for me to actually be applying with. So if I was applying for jobs, the first thing I would do would be to take this off. The, seth the second thing that I would do uh, would be to actually fix a lot of the grammatical errors that I have. So Pranath actually pointed out quite a few um, grammatical errors that are absolutely not acceptable. So the first one here is I say random forest instead of random forest. Even right next to it, I say native bays instead of naive bays. Uh, down here, I believe, uh, it just got cut off the the rest of the text and I also have you know a couple a couple different ones like I spell published wrong here and I'm not making any excuses I built this in Adobe Illustrator which does not have a spell check feature uh, still I have to be more careful and that's actually one reason why I recommend using Microsoft Word to make your resume first you should probably already have it Two, it has a really good spell checking feature if you don't use Microsoft Word, at least spell check stuff in Microsoft Word. Um, again, this is not acceptable for me to be uh, putting out content that, that has misspellings like this. And, you know, I'm, I'm again making this video because I need to be held accountable and I need to kind of make sure that I'm practicing what I preach here. So the next thing that I think I could really improve on is when I'm talking about the projects I did in my education, I don't start with what the outcomes were. I mean, I had some pretty cool results with the predicting cryptocurrency prices. I think I actually, my first video was, was on this project and I should start with what the outcome was. So I think it was like a day later, I was able to predict the direction of cryptocurrency prices uh, at like 60, 65% accuracy, which I think was really good. And I don't mention that anywhere in here. That's exactly what I should start with. And I should say that it was a recurrent neural net where I used LSTM in GRU cells later. Uh, so, you know, those are the types of things where you really want to communicate that very clearly what the outcomes were. So I need to generally do that in my work experience as well. Um, but let, let's say on education for a second here. So one thing I think that I should also include is my actual relevant coursework. So. I had a, a really good interview with my friend Jamin yesterday. His YouTube channel is Import Data, and I'm actually going to have him uh, interview him about his experience with a undergraduate data science degree in a video. I th it, it'll probably be later this week, honestly. And he said a lot of his, you know, the recruiters they actually ask questions about his coursework, not about his data science degree. And to me, that's very interesting. People, coursework is ev even more specific than what your major or whatever it is is. And if you have coursework, say in deep learning or in Python or whatever that might be, they'll know that you at least have a reasonable understanding of those topics. And they'll ask you what you learned in those courses. That's a great topic for a conversation. That is something for you guys I would absolutely include on your resume, but make sure it's relevant. You know, I don't care if you took, um, you know, a three-dimensional three art uh, that doesn't relate to your, your data science experience. But you know, if one of your responsibilities in the job description is creating really cool visuals and you took a graphics design course, I would absolutely want to see that on here. So I, I'd make sure that you, you kind of weave those things in and you include them uh, on your resume. An easy way to do that is you just have another bullet with relevant coursework and you list which classes that you have. Uh, the last thing that I, I would probably recommend for you guys is to probably not go as detailed or, or as high level with the aesthetics. I think a more plain text resume generally does better through any of the automated resume screening systems that they use. I personally use uh, a slightly more styled resume when I apply because at this point in my career, I'm a lot more picky about the jobs that I'm applying for and the jobs that, that I'm getting. I use the resume as like a little bit of a vetting process for me. 
if people don't like the way I present information, if they don't like some of the quirkiness that I have, I probably wouldn't really enjoy working at that company. And as you advance further in your career, it's really important to realize that the interview process, it goes both ways. They're not only interviewing you, but you should also be interviewing them to make sure that the role is a good fit. Again, for your earlier positions, you know, if you're entry level, if you're just starting out, I wouldn't worry as much about that. I'd worry about getting experience. But as you grow and as you continue, work-life balance and, and job satisfaction is very, very important. Um, and you should be keeping this in mind when you're interviewing for these data science roles. So as you can see, there's definitely some things that, that I need to go through and adjust here, mainly the spelling. Um, and that you guys should not, not uh, you should do as I say, not as I do regarding the resume because I'm at a different stage in my career. So hopefully this video has helped you understand exactly um, how you should make your resume different from mine, but also you know how to leverage some of the things that I do well regarding uh, the, the resume and, and getting that out there and you know using a little bit of a case study with this here. So thank you so much for watching. As usual, good luck on your data science journey.